Hi, today I'm going to show you how to knit a mitered square. If you're not familiar with this technique, don't worry about it because we're going to cover everything that you need to know to knit a mitered square. And if you're familiar with the hue shift afghan, this is one of our most popular, most downloaded patterns. This is the same technique that you're going to be using when you follow along with the hue shift pattern. So, to get started, we're going to cast on 49 stitches. I just use a simple long tail cast on, but you can feel to use whatever you're comfortable with. Now, even though the mitered square, the way the lines go, it is actually knit flat. So even though it's a unique shape, we start out knitting it flat, and then we're gonna do decreases on every other row. And that's gonna eat the middle portion of your project up and bring these two ends together. So that might sound a little bit funny, but as we continue on in the pattern, you'll see how the whole shape comes together. So the first thing that you wanna do is mark your center stitch. So again, we have 49 stitches, which means I'm gonna have 24 stitches on the left side, 24 stitches on my other side, and then I'm gonna mark that one center stitch. Now to do this, you want to use something that you can remove. So either a locking stitch marker like this, I'm just gonna use a simple split ring marker to mark my center stitch. You just wanna have something where you can easily take it on and off your stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark my center stitch. And I'm just gonna get started knitting. So the great thing about these mitered squares is that they're all knit in garter stitch. And that means that you just knit every single row. So again, I'm just gonna knit to one stitch before my center stitch that is marked. You just knit all the way across the row until you reach that one stitch before the center. So once you get to that first stitch before the center stitch, we're going to start our central double decrease. And what that means is you're going to be essentially decreasing two stitches at the same time. So to do that, you're going to slip the two stitches on your needle with your right needle and you're going to slip them as if to knit but both at the same time so you're not going to do it separately you're going to take your right needle and you're going to slide it through both stitches at once next you're going to knit the following stitch and then you're going to take your left hand needle bring it through both of the stitches that we just slipped and pull it over the knit stitch. And there we go. That's how you make a central double decrease. So after you do that, you work to the end of the row. And then on your second row, you're just going to knit across. You're not going to do any decreases. You're just going to knit straight. So essentially every other row, you get to take a little break and just knit across the row. It's really simple. So I'm going to continue knitting to the end of this row. I'm going to work my second row and that's where I'm going to show you how to continue in the pattern and bring in a contrasting color if you want to add stripes to your mitered square. So once I finish this row in the next, I'll meet you right back here. All right. So I finished up my second row of the mitered square in the same color. And I'm right back where I started on the same side. So I'm gonna introduce a new contrasting color to my mitered square. And again, this just adds a little bit of visual contrast to your mitered square. And it also enhances how the shape takes form. And to do that, I'm just gonna start knitting with my second color and I'm just gonna leave my yellow yarn dangling here. 
and we're going to knit two rows with the contrasting color and that is important because it's going to make it really easy for you to change colors back and forth between your two colors. So I'm going to use my purple, knit to the end, knit a second row, and then I'll bring me right back to the same side. And then I'll be able to just switch yarns and switch the colors really easily. And since I'm only knitting two rows with each color, there's not going to be a really big gap. So when you're carrying up your colors and switching, you're really not going to notice it at all. So to start with my contrast color, I'm just going to knit across in the same way that I did in my previous first row. And I'm going to do that until my first stitch before my marked stitch. And again, what you want to do with that marker is just move it up every single row that you are doing the decrease, and that's gonna make it really easy for you to find your center and know when to decrease. And after you know a few rows, you're gonna kind of see a texture from the central double decrease, and you might even be able to tell exactly where the center is and where you need a decrease, but just in case, just keep moving up that central uh, decrease and with the marked stitch and your either locking stitch marker or split ring marker. So I'm right here where I need to be. I'm at my first stitch before my marked stitch. And I'm just gonna do one more central double decrease right here. I'm gonna do it in the same exact way. I'm gonna slip both stitches at once with my right needle. Then I'm gonna knit my next stitch. And then with my left needle tip, I'm just gonna take those two stitches that I slipped earlier and bring them over my stitch that I just knit. And then again, we just knit to the end. And after you knit to the end of this row, you knit across the wrong side. So essentially you're only doing a central double decrease on every right side row or every two rows. So I'm gonna knit to the end of this row, knit across the second row, of my purple color or my second color if you're adding a contrast color and I'll meet you right back here and I'll show you how to switch between your two yarn colors. All right so I'm just at the end of my second row with my contrasting color. Now I can't really see the central double decrease that well yet because I'm only two decreases in so I'm just going to move my marker up one before I start my row. And that's just gonna make it a little bit easier. So now I am going to switch back to my first color, my main color, the yellow. And you can see both of my contrast yarns are on the same side. That just means I'm gonna be able to really easily switch my yarns. And I'm gonna do that by taking my first color, the one that's on the bottom, and bringing it up and over my second color, the one I just dropped. And we're not going to worry about the second color of yarn. We're just going to kind of leave it dangling. And I'm just going to continue to knit across this row. I'm going to do it the same way that we've been doing, knitting until I get right to the first stitch before my center stitch, the one that I have marked. And then I'm going to do another central double decrease right there. So now I'm going to do my central double decrease again. I'm going to slip my two stitches onto my right needle. I'm going to knit my next stitch. And then I'm going to just take my left needle tip and pull those two slipped stitches up and over that one stitch. And now again, as before with my previous colors and rows, I'm going to knit to the end of this row. I'm gonna knit across the next row, and I'm just gonna keep doing that, repeating those two rows, switching colors, and then once I get a little bit further, closer to the end of my mitered square, I'll meet you right back here. But again, you just keep doing the same exact thing, and it's nice and fun and easy, and as you get closer to the end, your rows are gonna become faster and faster to knit, so it's a really satisfying little project. So I'll meet you back here in a little bit. 
All right, so I've been working those two rows and switching my two yarns, and this is my progress on the mitered square. So now that this is oh, almost done, you can kind of see why adding alternating stripes of color, why you'd wanna do it. It adds a really nice visual touch and it really enhances the shape and how the decreases form. And I know I mentioned earlier that the central double decrease gives almost like a little texture, like a little nub to it. And you can kind of see right here is where my central double decrease happens. So after you get into it a few rows, if you can tell where your central double decrease is, you can stop marking that center stitch. But if you're not comfortable following the pattern or the texture of that decrease, just keep moving up your marker every other row. And we're just gonna continue in the same pa pattern and in the same way finishing this. So now I'm gonna move back to my purple yarn. I'm gonna do that in the same way I have been doing by laying it over my yellow yarn. And you can see, even though I've been switching my contrast yarn and my main yarn, there's only a very noticeable ridge right here where I'm switching between the two yarns. And it's kind of tucked away on the side, so it's really not noticeable at all since we're doing that only every other row. So now I'm only gonna knit one stitch. I'm gonna do my central double decrease by slipping those two stitches, knitting the next stitch, and then slipping them over my knit stitch, and knitting one. And now I'm gonna knit across the next row. And when you come to three stitches left, you're not gonna be able to knit any stitches before you do that central double decrease. So you're only gonna do the central double decrease to finish off your project. So again, I'm gonna change colors here by taking my yellow yarn, laying it over my purple yarn. And now I'm just gonna finish it by doing that central double decrease, since that's all the stitches I have is three stitches. So I'm gonna slip those two stitches, knit my last remaining stitch, and then slip those two stitches over. And there you go. I'm just gonna snip off the end right here. And then you just pull through your end, through your loop that you have here. And just tighten it up right here. And there you go. That's how you start and work a mitered square and how you finish it. So as I mentioned before, this is the same technique that's found in the hue shift afghan. Again, it's going to basically just use a lot of different colors, two at one time, and that's what gives the whole gradation effect to the hue shift afghan. But the actual technique, this is what you're going to be doing. The rest is done just with a series of different colors. And you can also do this in a solid color, but again, you can kind of see how it comes together, and I think it looks quite nice with two contrasting colors. So that's how you knit a mitered square.